let's get this party started. So welcome to our first, um, he'll, he'll come out. Um, so welcome to our first, um, uh, we call it the Back to the Basics series. And this is where we talk about a bunch of different topics. We have panels, we have guest speakers. And our first topic this month is all about love because this is the love month. And um, yeah. So before we start and go ahead, uh, let's all uh, center our hearts and uh, go into a prayer. So you can bow your heads. Gracious and loving God, thank you so much for today that you have gathered us all here together to come and have a conversation about what does it mean for, uh, what does it mean to love someone? What is marriage in your eyes? What is the biblical calling of loving people? God, I pray that you would be amidst us and that you would be at the center of our conversations today, that your love is the only one that truly matters and, and it shines above and beyond all of us. God, we thank you. We, we pray for the spirit to move in this room, to be touched, to be challenged, and uh, to for truth to come out. And we love you so much. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Oh, here we go. All right. So as we begin, uh, let's do, uh, my name is Pastor Kled. I am the Youth and Young Adults Pastor here. So you can call me at the Kled. You can call me Kled. Just don't call me Hey. <laughs> um, but I am serving here. Uh, I teach for uh, the, um, obviously, the youth and young adults. So you'll see me around and you'll talk to me. So don't be afraid of me. Um, and then let's meet our panelist for today. We have two lovely couples joining us. We'll start um, from the end. Um, will you please introduce yourselves, your, your name, your age? Um, and, uh, yeah, we'll start with that. Angry, we don't want you to get hangry. I want them to not get too angry because they are starving. So we have to give them the best food right now. Okay. I'm Norbert. don't have any home, consider us as your family, your second home or family. You are most welcome. So thank you for this, uh, uh, what is this, meeting or? Uh, Panel. <laughs> Panel. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you, Glad, for inviting us. And it's a pleasure for us to whatever we can give uh, the audience today. <laughs> I hope your questions are not too hard, you know, <laughs> or else I will... I'll, I'll throw it back to you. <laughs> okay, thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Jeff. Uh, I'm part of the pastoral team, and I'm uh, honored to be here. And uh, welcome to all the new faces and, uh, of course, all, the, all our uh, youth ministry. And uh, hopefully we all learn you know, uh, from this afternoon. So we're excited about all your questions. Hi, I'm Sister Minnie. So I am actually the wife of Pastor Jeff. <laughs> so the other half. So we have three kids. Uh, my my eldest is PQ, Pastor Clint. And my second one is Joe Giwa. He's like 19 years old. And my daughter, Brielle. Okay, she's the last one. So uh, my profession is actually a teacher. So I teach in a high school setup. And I love to teach science too. 
And uh, I hope that we will learn from this uh, panel today. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, guys. This is uh, our lovely panel. So before we dive into some questions, uh, tell us about um, how, how long have you been married, first of all? And then how, what, what is a quick, sweet, short love story? So that everybody gets interested and gets to know you a bit. I'll tell how many years for us. Like, uh, it will be our 25 years this coming February 10. Uh, 10. Okay, so, yeah, that's it, 25th year. <laughs> so you tell the love story because you're better on that. <laughs> quick, quick love story. And I got to know the Lord when I was, uh, like, uh, 19 years old or 20. I got to know the Lord, and my pastor told me, uh, when you're looking for a lifetime partner, don't go to a bar that, because you'll end up for a one-night stand. Go to a church so you'll end up with a long life, no, uh, uh, like a forever or something like that. So when I went to their church, I saw her. I'm, I, 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 I'm not saying that it is like a love, of, a love at first sight because I don't believe in that. But uh, I believe in the uh, first attraction, no? uh, attraction at first sight. So I saw her and I told my friend that that would be the woman I'm going to marry someday. But that is just a joke. No? But it happened. No? We, were, we, we used to be in the same university and uh, we graduated same year, but we never met. So we were, we're, we were also uh, in... We were also in uh, University of the Philippines, and we were in watching one place, same, uh, watching one, movie. one, uh, what do you call that? A uh, play. A play. We were both there, but we don't know each other. And I was a crew in McDonald's. Her sister is my crewmate, but we don't know each other. So there was a time that he was invited to our house, whole house but he never, he did not say yes. Yeah. I, 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 I joined the other group. I didn't join her sister's group. So we never had a chance to meet each, uh, meet each other. So there were many times, probably we can meet at the university or at that time in a, in a play or uh, during the time her sister is uh, inviting me. But we got the chance to meet in a church. And uh, in our church, if you like someone, especially if you're a young adult, you need to go to our pastor and ask for clearance for you to, to, uh, I know, to uh, court, court so her. So, so you already know. The problem is that there's a lot of other, you know, contenders. young adults, <laughs> other contenders. <laughs> Contender. Because of my red lipstick. No. <laughs> So my pastor will always say, no, no, uh, uh, forget about it. But uh, when I asked the pastor, and uh, before that, the pastor told me he had, he had a prof... Oh, no, no, no. No, <laughs> no Siri. <laughs> so I, I asked my... Uh, I, my pastor told me he had a prophetic something like, oh, someday you'll become a pastor. And I said... Okay, and then he, 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 and then I asked him the question. Oh, I like this girl, and I believe that you know her. She attends your life group, and she said, "Okay, let me let me set the date." So it means a clearance. So we, I got to know her and uh, courted her, but I uh, I was uh, denied, busted. She was rejected. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to be continued. <laughs> to be continued. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, uh, how will I, how will I start it? Uh, way back 1979 or 80. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh no, that's the time I came to know the Lord. And then uh, my wife Alvi, uh, she's already uh, serving in the church or she knows the, uh, the Lord already. But she told me, I believe you. Oh, you're the first one. I don't believe. Okay. Okay. Uh, we we came to know each other. It's a long story. But to make it short for you, 
1987, we got married, and then we have children right now, uh, two children, a boy and a girl. I I I saw her. I saw him. Oh, oh, oh hold, on, saw hold, him. On, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm not yet done. Oh. <laughs> Suspense, okay. Uh, so, uh, before that, the church that she's going to, uh, it's a Pentecostal church. Uh, but actually, I, I was influenced in, within the university. Then I, they, I just came to know their church when somebody from that university there uh, attending in the church. I was shocked because uh, they're inviting, uh, like the Piging, there's a food, you know. Uh, but I'm working then during that uh, years in an accounting firm, and I told my, my co co-workers, okay, let's go. Uh, let's eat and exit uh, yung kaina, then sibat kasi. That's why, uh, that's how they try to do the evangelism in the church. We have no idea. And then that's the time that I was hooked in the Lord uh, without knowing it in, in the university. Every night before we go home, there's a group there. They're gathering until such time that I came to know the Lord in that uh, group uh, because of the food. <laughs> and then uh, I was uh, too young as a Christian. I'm not yet matured. I, I don't understand any, everything about what they're talking about. So I... I transferred to another church in uh, Assemblies of God, and I was able to work in World Vision. Then I go around in Central Luzon until such time that uh, I told the Lord when I just want to leave the church again. And before I left the church, I told, I told the Lord, Lord, uh, I wanted to really to serve you because I was a member then in the choir. My voice is baritone, uh, lower than... Uh, and bass, so it's very hard for, for me to, to get a bass in, in the choir sometimes or a baritone. So I went, to, I went back to my former church, the first time that I know the church that I attend to. And then, there you go, okay. You want to <laughs> continue? <laughs> okay, That's, uh, she will take that part. <laughs> And one day, I was about to go to church. That was Sunday. And we have this uh, transportation, you know, when you go to one certain place, there is only one uh, uh, vehicle that will bring you there in the church. So at one time, I was there with my friend. I was at the back of the, uh, the driver, and he was sitting. He was coming. I saw him coming. He was he seated on the edge of the, of the vehicle which they call his jeepney, you know, in the Philippines. And so while I was talking to a friend who is a best friend, one of the, my best friends, and we were talking about the guy whom am I praying for. You know, I'm praying for someone that was... And then suddenly, uh, there was this... Uh, I think it's the Lord who, who spoke in my heart and said, that guy on that corner will be a part of your life. And I didn't even, I didn't even uh, tell anyone about it because I'm not sure if it's really from God or some, somewhere else or something like that. So I waited. I just prayed about it and prayed so hard and really seek the Lord and soak the, and really soak my, my uh, you know, my day every day with the word of God. So I was really praying and then I said, Lord, are you really the one who's really talking to me? Because I'm praying for someone. And I said, and so I didn't, I didn't really give attention on that. So because I was praying for someone. But the Lord worked. And then one day, until one day, that we need someone in the choir. So he was coming from the, from up, because that one is kind of, we're on the second floor. And he was coming, walking. And I saw him, and my heart was really, I don't know what you can, it's, it's really, Beating so fast, and I was really, I could not really take it. So I was kind of was really praying, Lord, is he the one? And then it just came out that he was the one, uh, a friend of our, one of our members. So he, they said that they need him as a, as, as a one, to be one of, of our, you know, choir member. 
so because he was buried tall. And so I said, okay. I just kept quiet and waited until the Lord <laughs> will demonstrate to me. So that's it for now. And later you'll, you'll find out. <laughs> yeah. So that's a that's a quick short love story from each of them. You'll find out more as we continue on. So our, let's let's dive into our first question. If I can, if my clicker is working. There we go. Okay. So our first question: Do you believe? In love at first sight. No. No. Uh. I don't believe in love at first sight. Uh, of course, like if you see someone that you don't like, would you would you agree <laughs> that it's love at first sight? So I think uh, there's still what you call attraction, at least <laughs> for the first time. Usually it starts with a physical attraction, not necessarily, you know, like an Angelina Jolie or Brad Pitt kind of guy, but um, uh, usually it starts with a certain feature that, oh, I like her hair, or for a lady probably, I like his eyes, it's so expressive, something like that, it's more, a physical, <laughs> it's, more a physical, it's more of a physical attraction. I believe in attraction at first sight, but I don't believe in love at first sight because love has a deeper meaning. And uh, if you use it in that particular moment, the first time you see a person, you fall in love right away, that is kind of, uh, you know, questionable. Yeah. I don't. I don't believe in love at first sight. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Pastor Bert, <laughs> love at first sight. <laughs> Okay. Do you believe in it? Uh, well, I believe uh, Adam and Eve. Uh, no one else in on that garden. No choice. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm thinking. Uh, well, the same thing, you know. Uh, love at first sight. Well, love at first sight doesn't last. What I believe that lasts is that uh, that attraction really uh, in process. Uh, that is, I believe, the, the right thing to, once you fall in love, don't just, uh, because she has a beautiful eyes or blue eyes or whatever, kasi may mga fake eyes na ngayon eh, di ba? Yung may nalalagay na kulay, they can, uh, deceiving, you know? Can contact lens. Yeah, contact lens. Uh, so, I believe, uh, love at first sight, well, it's up to you, but uh, because you have eyes to see, you know? <laughs> but uh, listen to your pastors. Uh, it is better to uh, go on the process, not only on the first first moment you see a guy or you see a lady, a beautiful lady. It's very deceiving sometimes. It is. Uh, it's much better to to go on the process. Thank you. Let's go on to our next question. Okay, gaano po katagal magligaw at paano po manligaw ng maayos? In English, how wow. long should you court someone and how do you do it well? So we're, uh, I don't know if you're seeing a trend, but we're, we're starting out with uh, dating when we're going to marriage and then we'll go to singleness. So first we're in the dating range. So how do you, how long should you court <laughs> someone or how do you do it well? Okay, that's a good question. What does courting even mean? So we can go with how does courting mean, and then if you should do it, should there be a timeline? Is is that something that you should put a timeline? Um, yeah, and if you if there is a timeline, how do you do it well? Like, do you have to give chocolates? Do you have to pay for everything, whatnot. So go ahead. I can only define it in a Filipino perspective of how we court a girl. Let's define first what is courting. Courting, in our perspective back then in the Philippines, is that when you like a girl and you want her to be your girlfriend, so you'll do anything, as in go to her house, bring her flowers, bring her chocolates, send her love notes. There's no Facebook yet during our time. So um, do everything to please her. And as, and when in the right moment that you, that you say the magic word, I love you, so you're expecting 
do you love me too? A yes from her. Or no. Or no. <laughs> so, if, the, if it is a no, it means we call it busted. So, if it is a yes, it means that you are now into a committed relationship. So, that is courting in our perspective because there's a different perspective here. Now, what do you call, what uh, another, another thing is uh, dating. Dating, back then, in our, uh, during our time and back in our culture, dating means uh, you are exclusively uh, with somebody that you are dating, like going in a movie house or, uh, you know, you're exclusively uh, being seen always together. But the thing is, dating is kind of different here. When you, when you define dating here, it's different. No? You, you can say dating as in you're living in together. You call it dating. You know what I mean? But in, but in our culture, it's kind of different. So uh, if the question is how long should you court someone, so let's answer that first. Uh, for, again, I can, also, I can only answer from, from our culture. There's no such thing as how long that you should court. There is such thing... <laughs> There is such thing as how long can you wait for the an for the answer of the girl uh, for the yes answer of the girl, so it is up to you. So the more the more it is prolonged, probably she is testing you or whatever. But uh, there is no such thing as how long, because when you put a time frame, it is like. Okay, I'll give you like six weeks. If you don't say yes, I'll move over to another person. So it makes, uh, it seems like you're not that um, serious in your intention. So when you ask, how do you do it well? Paano manligaw ng So how do you do it well? Uh, the, the problem here is that we're asking the wrong question. Um... Uh, the right question would be probably before I court a girl or before I do it well for her to be pleased, I should ask the question, what are the pre-requirements before I consider courtship? So what are these? First, am I spiritually matured? Am I emotionally stable? Am I mentally healthy? Am I financially able? If it, it means that you already graduated from college, you already have a good job, and you have a clearance from your mother and father <laughs> that, you are, <laughs> that you want to have a girlfriend or boyfriend. So these are things that you need to consider before thinking of how long should you court or how you are going to do it well. The, the thing is... Uh, uh, courting somebody is something that you really need to to consult God, no? because um, you are looking for a lifetime partner. Imagine lifetime partner. This is not somebody that you will be with like for six months and then end of contract. So you have to consider it before God. Consult God. Consult people who believes in God. Probably your pastor or your disciple. Or uh, these are things that should not be taken lightly. So that's it. But my, 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 my answer for this is that before you consider this, how long, how you going to do it, always remember, am I, you ask yourself, am I spiritually uh, uh, matured? Did I finish my, my, my education? Am I done with college? Do I have a good job? Am I financially stable? Even though you, you're done with college, it doesn't mean you're financially stable, right? You, you, if, you're, you're, if you're financially stable, you're mentally healthy, because you'll be affecting another person's life. You need to be emotionally stable and psychologically fit. Then you can start praying for a lifetime partner. Does anybody want to have an ad, Pastor Bird, Sister LV? Uh, courting, yung manliligaw, no? Sa atin, in our dialect or in our culture, or uh, they call it uh, um, mamanikan or 
man, 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 maglolo. Maglolo. That, that is in my dialect, uh, courting. Well, for me, uh, I'm not Jacob, you know, na, to court a woman for seven years or 14 years. Who's, who's Jacob? Who's Jacob? Uh, okay, Jacob, by the way, is the brother of Esau in the Old Testament. Uh, you know, their father is Isaac. You, are you familiar with that passage in Genesis? The brothers, Jacob had to, uh, in his uh, uh, younger days, he came to know this woman, you know, or this lady. And it takes seven years to court her. And before he, he court the, the lady, he had to ask permission to the parents. I believe the same thing in our culture. Uh, in order, you said, in order to have a formal, what's that? Uh, how long or uh, how, how do you do it well? In courting, in order, uh, what they call the formal courting, you know, you have to ask permission to the parents. And even before you ask uh, the permission, you ask your, your mom or I ask my mom or my dad. But actually, my dad passed away so early at, at my age, at early age, you know. So I, I asked my mom. Uh, but the formal courting is that you, you go to the house of the lady that you are wooing. wooing is that the right term? Yeah. yeah. Uh, and you don't have to court her on the street or wherever, what place you go, you know. So it's not like here. I don't know what uh, how what the culture here. Uh, once you are courting, or that formal courting a woman or a lady, so you have to go to their house. You have to talk to their mother or to their parents. You tell them your intention. Uh, I remember my old pastor says, uh, "Once you say I love you to a lady or to a beautiful woman, you are ready to say, will you marry me?'" Okay, remember that. So Pastor Jeff is telling us or telling you that uh, before you say that I love you or uh, you are waiting for that yes answer <laughs> to, your, to the lady or to the man you are courting. Is it? Tama ba yun? Sinabi, may babae bang naliligaw? Pwede, pwede naman. Okay. Nasaan na ba? Ano ba sinabi ko? In courting, yeah. You must be stable enough, no? Uh, not only financially, but uh, in all aspects, no? emotionally, uh, spiritually. But the best thing there is that uh, what Pastor Jeff says is that uh, as much as possible, uh, you must have the same belief or uh, the lady that you are suing or uh, wooing, uh, pareho yung, ano nyo, yung belief, pananampalataya. Remember what Paul says that don't be uh, equally yoked with unbeliever. You can yoke with unbeliever, but it is very hard. That's why uh, at first hand, the word of God, according to St. Paul, says that as much as possible, if you wanted in the future to uh, be yoked with uh, somebody, or you must not choose unbeliever or don't be equally yoke with uh, not the same what you believe. So I believe that is the right uh, formal courting in our culture. You have asked the permission of the parents. But sometimes, uh, if I may add, I remember when my older sister, there's somebody coming in our house at night. At night, they, they are coming mostly, they court at night. That is the best time. Then my father, if doesn't like that gentleman, he will put kulambu right away, you know, and banig. Do you know what that kulambu? <laughs> uh, uh, you are ready to sleep, you know. <laughs> the mosquito net, you know that? Before you go to sleep, they, they put that kulambu or that... Uh, my, my dad, when the, when the gentleman who is... Uh, Courting my el the eldest of my sister, my dad, if he doesn't like the guy, he will put right away that uh, mosquito net <laughs> as if he's asking the guy, 
Oh, we are already sleeping. You better go home. <laughs> That's why Pastor Bert, biblically aside, <laughs> uh, we, we put biblical culture aside. If you look at our culture, we first uh, try to please the parents. For example, I like a girl, and then I go to their house. I will buy pizza for the mother or, you know, something <laughs> like that, that uh, so that they will like you. They will allow you to be in their house. So that's what uh, Pastor Bed is saying, that, you know, you need to be okay with the parents. So That's one of the secrets. <laughs> Bring a lot of food. Bring a lot of food. <laughs> Yeah, and and this is uh, uh, and this is uh, this is more Filipino culture, yeah. but but on that side, I mean, Americans have a different culture, uh, and in my opinion, I would I would suggest maybe going through a Filipino route because, uh, think about it, if you really really like someone, if you're really interested in someone, then you do put in the work, and the best put in work is if their parents like you, you don't even have to. Um, you know, do your own case for the girl or the guy, like the parents will fight for you. So you you get the parents on your side, then they are on your side. It's easier for you um, to be in a relationship. So. And you have to do it at the right age and time. Yeah. So it doesn't mean that, for example, like, you know I mean, emotions are real. Sometimes you would see a, a male or a female, they're really attractive. But, you know, like uh, in a Christian circle, you really have to wait for the right time to, I mean, you can appreciate them, you know, but not, you know, uh, in being, being involved in a serious relationship or courting, that's a big commitment already. Uh, well, let's go on to the next question. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Uh, next question. This is also a long question. What if a person is at the starting point of maturing spiritually? Will it be all right to date them, or should I encourage them to wait and grow our faith to for our faith towards God together first? So, in short, um, is it a good idea to date somebody if they're beginning, if they're starting their journey um, as a Christian, or do I wait? and grow together with them first. So, uh, it, I mean, it's, uh, the question... I, su I suggest that you wait mm -hmm. because you might be a hindrance to his or her growth because he, he or she is on her... He or she is on his or, or her way in getting to know God. Give her, give him or her enough space to get to know more of... to get to know more the Lord and then don't be a hindrance of... Uh, you know, you can be somebody that uh, will hinder that person. But if that person became right with God and you are, you know, you are okay with the Lord, the Lord is, the Lord will always, uh, you know, God is, an, God is a, an answering praying God. Uh, God is a, 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 what do you call it? A, a praying, a, a prayer answering God. So, there's no impossibility. It's always possible that uh, if you put him first, then the desires of your heart will be met. So I do agree with that because, like, uh, based on our relationship, like when I when we when he courted me, he was not like fully mature, but I was like the one who's really committed in the church, and my maturity level is higher than him. I mean, the best way would be is if we could have waited for a little bit longer. Then because, in, uh, uh, for example, if you commit yourself and you got married, then that will be the time that all of the weaknesses will appear. And you will not be ready for that challenge. So uh, it's easier to be mature. Like when you commit to get married, like you should be, both of you should have the same maturity level so that you will not have a, any problem along the way. I agree with that. <laughs> Copy. No. Copy paste. Yeah, it's 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 the same. Uh, I I also felt that because when I when he started courting me, because be prior to that I was praying to God that the man that the guy uh, whom I will be with a relationship, I I asked the Lord that 
is more. He loves the Lord so much. He will love the Lord more than me. That's what I was praying for. And he will be in the ministry. And he will be the one to carry me towards to loving God more. So we need more. You know, it should be on the level of uh, spiritual maturity. Are a Christian already, and you wanted to get into that kind of a situation, uh, don't go in a rush, okay? Uh, you must uh, know each other. The, the better you know each other, the uh, mas maganda, no? As you uh, learn from each other, and as you grow in your spiritual life, and yeah, you will see if uh, really, uh, even though you are uh, in a date or courting already on that stage. Sometimes there are, there are things that the Lord will, will try to show to you, you know. And if you can uh, overcome those things, uh, sometimes which doesn't go on the things you, you like, no? But the Lord is teaching you on that way. So for me, don't, uh, go, don't rush. Uh, it's better or it's good if you have uh, that long to, uh, to, more, to know more each other. And I believe uh, be more, look, look unto the Lord. Or I mean say, uh, if you are in the, min in the church, if you are involved in the ministry, um, uh, focus yourselves in serving the Lord, you know. The same thing uh, uh, with us. We are not thinking right away of uh, uh, courting or dating her right away. Actually, we focus on the ministry, and then when the time comes, you know, and the Lord will just meet your heart together and knit together. And it's much better once you go on that process. Because once you make a decision right away, not going in that process, and then when, she, when you are uh, thinking that, uh, oh, I made a mistake, that's too late already, you know. So take time. You're still young. Yes, and you don't want your partner to experience hardship because of the baggages that you have. I mean, there's a lot of baggages like mentally, emotionally, like even financially. You don't want to get into a mess like when you're in that relationship. So, I mean, let the Lord deal with all your baggages, being yourself, being Jeff, being Nini, being Allison, being Rena, until such time that both of you, like, if that person is, you know, God has destined that person for you, I mean, you grow, to, you will grow together, like, without all those baggages. So you just have to really wait for the right time. What we experienced is that we enjoyed more of our friendship first. And that's our foundation, our friendship. We became very so close. We always talk a lot. And then when we became boyfriend and girlfriend, exclusively dating, and then became engaged and then got married. That friendship never left us. Until now, we enjoyed long walks, you know, and talking about everything, our lives, our future, our children, our ministry. So we enjoyed each other, you know. The problem is that when you, uh, the problem starts when you look at your partner as an enemy and uh, you don't look at her or him as a friend. So the basic foundation should be you should enrich your friendship. So, for example, you like a person. You don't have to go to, a, in a, you don't have to enter into a commitment right away. Start with friendship. You know, be nice to him or her and let him, uh, you know, uh, if, if you can see, if you will see a, that he or she will re reciprocate, then that's better. But friendship is the, the basic foundation of a relationship. Thank you. Um, next question is, what does it mean to guard your heart? How far is too far in terms of uh, that could be emotional boundaries or physical boundaries? And um, that looks like holding hands, kissing, making out, um, and dating. And that also looks like sharing traumas, like your your life traumas. That is, uh, that's what would you call... Um, Emotional intimacy, because there's uh, there's a lot of other types of intimacies other than touching someone. So, um, what does it mean 
um, to guard your heart? To guard your heart means you put boundaries. Uh, here's the thing. Is it okay to be attracted to an opposite sex? Yes. Is it okay to feel, I can't, I don't know how, what is it in English, kilig? There's no word for it. It's like a, <laughs> the butterflies when you, you know, see someone. Even, you see, when you have a crash and you see the, the roof of the, the house of your crash is like, you know. Well, anyway. Get excited. Yeah. Uh, Get excited. What I'm saying is, is it, what, is it, the question is, is it okay to be attracted to an opposite sex? Yes. No problem. Uh, what if it is mutual? It's okay. Just don't enter into a relationship yet, especially when you're still young and you're not yet ready. Okay? Because when you enter into a relationship, remember, it is a commitment. And when you have commitment, you can always ask favor from one another. For example, we are in a relationship. I ask for like a dollar from her. It's okay because we are in a relationship, right? So we're kind of, you know, open with each other. If I ask, can I hold your hands? It will be okay with her even though she doesn't like it because she doesn't want to offend me. So from holding of hands to kissing to making out, then eventually it will be okay, ne not necessarily it is, if it is really okay or not, but it will become okay because remember, you entered a commitment. So once you enter a commitment and you are not yet ready, spiritually matured, financially uh, uh, able, physically, uh, what they call this, uh, psychologically fit, mentally healthy, all that lee, 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 and you are not yet ready, then you will be into a compromising situation. It's either you hurt yourself or you hurt your partner. Okay? So be very careful. So what does it mean to guard your heart? To guard your heart is to always in, uh, make yourself tune with God. That's how you, that's the best way to guard your heart. Always consider the feelings of another person. Do not rush into commitment that is guarding your heart, especially if, if you're still young. You know. And if ever you are ready to get married, still wait for the right timing. Wait for the, you may kiss the bride. And I now pronounce, so wait for the, the 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 wedding, no, and then you have all the time to enjoy each other. So there's a saying: Do not eat eat the cake when your birthday is Friday. You eat it on Wednesday. So there's no excitement to eat the cake on Friday. Did you did you get it? So what I'm saying is, to guard your heart is not yet. Wait for God's uh, uh for God's uh. uh uh, for God's approval, uh, do not enter a commitment yet. But again, is it okay to have a crush? Is it okay to be attracted? That's normal. All right? So for four years in high school, he is your crush. It's okay. Just don't yet, not yet. Do not enter into relationship yet. All right? So there's no problem with that. You want to give him gifts? You want to give her gifts? It's okay. Just don't enter into a commitment yet. Because when you are in a commitment, there will be compromising situations. And for sure, remember I told you a while ago, we are, you, you, know, you are both selfish. For sure, one person will abuse the other person. It doesn't mean it's always the male. So, you know what I mean. <laughs> Guard your heart. Okay, how far is too far and set boundaries? Remember, heart is a soft organ and, and in the Bible it says the heart is the very center of our life where the blood flows, where it pumps in and out, you know, so that you will uh, continue um, breathing or living. 
And yet, this heart is, as I've said, this very soft organ of, of the body. It can be hurt, you know. It can be broken. So, in marriage or in dating, you know, once we are uh, talking about all of this, courting uh, a lady or a gentleman, courting a young lady, or a young lady court courting a gentleman. Pwede yun, ano? <laughs> yeah. So, be careful. I remember that, uh, what is that, Tagalog uh, series, Be Careful With My Heart. You might break my heart. It is, it is, uh, it is a sad thing, no? That you are too young, then you commit yourself already as if you are already husband and wife, which is not supposed to be, no? Uh, outside marriage, the things that couples do, you know, uh, must not be, no? Uh, if you are single or if you are dating, you don't do the things that the couples do. And even though you are on the process, you are, uh, let, me, let me say that uh, you are both Christians, still, you must set a boundaries, you know. Uh, how much more if you, your partner is not, unbe uh, is not a believer or is he or she is unbeliever? It is, there is a danger there. That's why the question says, you must what? Uh, what is that? Uh, guard, guard your heart and set boundaries. That is the right thing to do, you know, in order not only to save yourself in the future, if you are hoping, no, you will not say on the, on the very end that, oh, I made a mistake. Oh, I, I hope I did not uh, do that thing or I, will, I did not yet uh, say I do or yes or I commit myself. So it is good to wait, you know, go on that process. It is, as Pastor says, that uh, uh, build your friendship. It's much better if you start on that uh, as you go along, you know, and then you know each other. Then later on, you know, uh, the Lord will, uh, on the right time, sabi nga, naririnig ko sa itbulaga eh, sa tamang panahon, <laughs> in the right time, the Lord will... Uh, will knit together your heart when you, once you are prepared already. And also like guarding your heart uh, for me is it's very important to have a mentor. Like someone to, to watch over you so that you can pour out your heart so that you will not be focused on what you think. At least you could tell it to someone who is like mature and you know will like give you a godly advice when to not to and to do things. So uh, I know it's hard to, to choose a mentor, like someone you can trust and someone you have respect. But in a church, it's very important that you would uh, uh, choose a mentor so that you, could, you will be guided to. And, and remember, you will all be parents too. You don't want to see in your living room your kids are making out, right? So, I mean... Uh, it's better to be a good example to them. And uh, imagine young people want to hold hands, kiss, and make out because they are very curious. It's out of curiosity. But imagine there's a lot of married people nowadays, been married for like five years, 10 years, 20 years, who doesn't hold hands and kiss anymore and doesn't make out anymore. So is it really something that, uh, you know, it, it might be deceiving because, you know, our, our, our age is kind of, you know, curious about these things. But there are, as, as, as the Word of God says in Ecclesiastes, that there's a time for everything. There's a perfect time for everything. You know, there's a God's perfect time for everything. So you need to enjoy each moment of your life. If it's not yet uh, for that time, don't do it because you'll be in a compromising situation. But if it is your time, you're already married, and you're, you're, you're oh, do whatever you want, enjoy it. Go ahead, we will help you <laughs> <laughs> in your wedding. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Uh, I, I think a big part of it is 
Uh, I mean, society and culture today really pushes. I mean, every, every TV show you watch, anything, YouTube ads, billboards, it encourages sex. Like, sex is the thing. But there is such a thing that when you have physical intimacy, there's a lot of emotional intimacy that's tied. Um, people say that's not true, but it, it is. It's been proven by science, too. And so I think a big thing is knowing that guarding your heart is for yourself. It's it's not you're not being a prune or anything. You're you're simply sh you're simply saving yourself or putting yourself in a place that you're honoring yourself and you're honoring the the future person that you will be with. And so we we talk about this because we really want to create a paradigm for you to to follow that 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 would save yourself from so much more heartache. And take it from people who've made mistakes. You know, it's, it's a lot of heartache when, when you make such mistakes like these. And so uh, moving on to the next question. And um, let me just uh, add, always check your motive. Because why do you want to hold the hands, kiss the other person, or make out with him or her? It's because you want to experience the person. Remember, that person would be the future wife or husband of another person. If he or she will be your wife or husband. But the thing is, uh, you want to do it because you're just physically attracted. And then after you're done with it, you want to go to another person and do it again. And done with it, go to another person. So you're, you're, you, you are bringing hurt to these people and you, you are also bringing hurt to yourself. So the tendency will be a miserable life in the future. So please don't do it. Wait for God's timing. Thank you. Uh, so our next question, what does love mean to God? Mm. Short answers. <laughs> if you can try to shorten it, please shorten it. Lo love is one of the attributes of God. It's really one of the character of God. So if, if uh, you have that love, in, love of God it, within your heart, and then you can easily love others, right? So, uh, what is this? Uh, when, <laughs> when you are attracted to someone, uh, it doesn't mean that you love. It, there is love, right? So you are just attracted to someone. But if you have the love of God, that really, uh, what is this, really uh, there in your heart, it's really, uh, um, what is this, uh, Deep inside you, it's there's love. It will just show. But even, even, even in courting, even in relationship, if the right guy, uh, if the Lord gives you the right guy, then the Lord will just show it to you. But I know, just if you're you're still young, don't rush and just you wait patiently for the Lord, and, and the Lord will really give the best. Uh. So in the, for me, in the perspective of human love, uh, I think uh, it's more of like being selfless, like in a relationship, being selfless, being comp you complement each other. You nurture the person to grow, not just being selfish like, oh, you would just think about what about my growth, what about my growth. So how will you complement like the person's growth so that she will grow in the Lord, she will grow in her, in her career? or in his career, or uh, in all aspects, like mentally, emotionally. So uh, it's really like more of benefiting the one whom you co have committed to. The, the Greek uh, put it, uh, one, one good thing about the Greeks, they, they, were, they were able to express this in many words, you know, like storge, or uh, uh, phile eros, you know, or uh, uh, agape, or uh, Philadelphia, or brotherly love. Uh, eros is romantic love. Uh, agape is, uh, it means unconditional love. That is the closest that you can call God. No? God operates in love. The operating system of God is love. The very motive of God is love. The very motive of him sacrificing himself, giving up his life for us. It's because of love. And he is love, actually. So after this life, we will live forever with him in a godly environment, in a lovely environment. So uh, uh, if, you, if you will talk about love, 
it comes from god love is god so it is some it is, some, it is you see emotions is very deceiving if i if i love my wife because she's only beautiful eventually on her 60th birthday i need to change my wife right <laughs> but unconditional love is loving the person even though she's physically attractive or not you know it's just it's it's because you love the person as just as love as just as, just as love as just as god loves us so if there is one love that we need to use let's use the agape love do not rely on ero- erotic love or eros love because you know it always fades away usually when 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 the the physical feature fades away then the love is gone so be careful your emotion is deceitful what does love mean to god well actually god is love in 1 john 4 7 8 if you know that uh, passage it says beloved let us love one another <laughs> Beloved, let us love one another. Like that. <laughs> But at the last passage there it says for God is love. Okay. Uh the very as sister LB mentioned that uh, the very nature of God the attributes of God is love. So as children of God we must uh express that love because we were created because our god is love and we wanted to share that uh, that beautiful uh, uh, relationship with us that's why when he created adam you know by the way when he create god created everything do you know that he just speak the word and everything was created but when he created man and eve he exerted as we have heard from the message this morning pastor says that uh, even the hands of god as if he is trying to uh, make that visual for us that he his hands get dirty he he what you he formed us he exerted effort as pastor says so he just not say let there be adam then adam just appear no he exerted effort because of that love no that's why when he saw adam is is not yet complete that's why he created eve out of adam is what is that in hebrew he's isa is no isa that's why they call that isa al masi uh, the savior uh, so here we can see that uh, that love not only eros eros it fades away no yung erotic love but if you have that kind of love you know sabi nga nung kanta kahit maputi na ang buhok ko even though my wife hair will turn into blue or no <laughs> into gray <laughs> i will still uh, uh, i will uh, honor that uh, commitment that vow that i made you know that uh, it says because uh, the message says she's bone of my bone now she's um, flesh of my flesh so we are one so whatever ha- might ha- happen in the future because someday i don't know who, who will go first you will remain single again but uh, that love will last no because uh, that uh, that love that you have it is not only based on your emotion or that erotic or eros it is based on the love of god and when i you marry somebody you love somebody uh, whatever the not only the positive thing that i see in her even the negative thing it is a kumbaga full package once you get into that uh, relationship you just not only trying to uh, say Oh, I love you because you have a beautiful eyes, no? Even though yes, she has, does, she doesn't have a beautiful body, you will uh, accept that uh uh I mean, yung 
<laughs> yeah. Uh, you will still love her, okay? Because uh, and it is not only, uh, I remember yung, yung sinabi ni Pastor na it's not only a contract, it is a covenant, not only between you, but between you and God. So better honor that. That's why marriage or dating or courting, you must always think it, it is about God, no? Everything. Uh, God's plan, all of this. Uh, there's that dating or courting or wooing a woman. God put that in our heart, you know? In, uh, uh, and then the good thing is that uh, once you acknowledge God, God will be the one to choose for the right uh, person for you. Amen. Uh, this may sound cliche when we are being asked as believers, what does love mean to God? This may sound cliche, but this is very true. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son. Uh, whosoever believes in him will have eternal life. No? So that's how God loves us. And imagine that is the central passage of the Bible, the main message, that he loves us so much that he's willing to give up his life for us and uh, wishing us that uh, someday we'll be with him for eternity. So that is the kind of love of God. Thank you. Um, our next question asks, what does marriage mean in the eyes of God? You guys kind of touched upon it. so yeah, I already answered that this morning. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we're going to move past that question. <laughs> Um, how do you know, how do you know they are the one? Yes, like, oh, this is, this is the one for me. If we are still single, and if you ask me that question, how do I know if she's the one? Another question would be, how does she know I am the one, <laughs> right? <laughs> so, if, if you want to know if you are the one for a person, be the one for God first. Straighten out your relationship to God, focus on God, and let Him reward you, a beautiful partner in the future. So for me, how do I know that He's the one? So I had like previous relationship prior to my husband, but like when I decided that, you know, I would fully give myself to God and focus on like in the ministry and serving the Lord, uh, I know God told me that I will give you the best one, okay? I will give you the best one, and you don't deserve any lesser person than I have designed for you. So during that time that he, he was courting me, so actually I said no, because I know that I'm not ready for this relationship. But eventually God spoke to me and told me, oh, uh, give him a chance, because uh, if you will not give him a chance, you will miss God's... Uh, choice for you god's per, god's best for you so that's why i get uh, from that time so we met then i told him that now nah, the lord's telling me to give you a chance so even if i said no prior to that at that time my girlfriend was winona rider so <laughs> i'm just kidding nobody's nobody knows the winona rider nobody anymore. knows, <laughs> nobody knows. <laughs> <laughs> they don't know her so but always remember this god even if, like, you have a very uh, bad past, God has prepared something for you that is the best person there is. You don't deserve no less. Like, for example, you, you, you had experienced difficulty in life. Like, God will not give you the person, the second best or the third best or the fourth best. You know, since you're a son and a daughter of a living God, he will give you the best there is because he des you deserve the best because you are his child. Amen. Okay. If, we will, if you will push your will, you will get the second best. Yes. You will settle for the second best. But if you will wait for God, you will get, you will get the best of the best. And yeah, sometimes you don't, you don't have to pray for that person because they will come along. Darating lang eh. And you just, and God will tell you when you're ready with all the aspects of your life and he will, he will tell you. You know, to give that person a chance. Yeah, God told her that I will give you the best tall, dark, and handsome. And after 25 <laughs> years, I will double him. So look at me now. <laughs> Increase. <laughs> Increase in blessing. Doubled in size. Go ahead, Sister Elvie. So, before I met him, I was broken hearted. Oh. Oh. 
So it was really hard for me that time. So what I did, I really seek the Lord. And yes. I really seek the Lord. Um, and then I asked the Lord, uh, I asked really a, a big question, sabi ko, why did this happen to me? I'm already in the ministry. I'm really uh, seeking you. I really love you. you uh, and I give, my, I give myself to you. And, and you know, sometimes we really do not know when the Lord really works in our hearts, in our life. And as we wait and as we pray patiently, and the Lord will answer and answer us. And I was just really, uh, I, I really, uh, when, I, when I really seek the Lord and soak my life to Jesus, I was waiting, I was crying, and then suddenly he came. He came. So I know it was the Lord because I was, I was I've been praying for someone that I know maybe the Lord says, this is not right for you. This is not the right guy for you. You have the, I will give you the best guy. So I, when, when the time, you know, the Lord will really give you a lot of time. I was given a lot of three years to, in praying. So I was praying for three, time, three years. And then I even dropped, um, you know, I was enrolled in, 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 in that time. And I was, I really, uh, you know, uh, Withdraw. I dropped, and then I went to some, some place. I went in Baguio just to rest and think about everything, what happened to me. And then I, when I came back, the Lord really, uh, really uh, settled my heart and get me ready in the big things that is going to happen, going to do to me. So that's why when I met him, and it was really the Lord who really spoke in my heart. And it's really, I know the Lord spoke, speak to us uh, Sometimes that sometimes we don't even know. We don't even give attention. But this time I, I heard him saying really very clearly and that the guy will be a part of your life. And I was really rejecting it because he was not even tall, dark, and handsome. You know, <laughs> I, was, I was not even attracted to him. And I was really rejecting the Lord. No, Lord, no, I, I'm still praying for someone. Someone else, someone, someone else, else, Lord. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. For I was praying for someone else, and then, and then the Lord just struck my heart, and I, uh, I, I said. Uh, and then when I saw him back, because that was there's a span of a year before I, I, I saw him again, so we met again, and that's the time that he was there and would be the part of our team or choir. And so that start of the friendship first, nurturing the friendship, and he started, uh, uh, you know, yung hahatid kanya, you know, you just uh, uh, drop you to your house and help you walk, walk with you so before you go home, and then we talk a lot. And I know uh, because I uh, prior to that I was praying this time, Lord, I don't want to, I don't want to uh, to be broken again. This time I will be praying. If it is your will and if it's your uh, your purpose, Lord, whatever, because we being uh, sometimes we pray, we plan. There, there is a word in Proverbs sixteen nine. It says, "A man's heart plan, but the Lord directs his steps." Right? You know, the Lord will really do that into our into our hearts, into our life, and so He directs me to this person that I don't even like. No, yeah, no. I don't even no, like no, him. Love. Huh? No. But no. I love him so much. But wait, there's now, more. Now, <laughs> you know what? I really, I, I, I know I, I'm only the second. The Lord is the first. Yeah. God is the first. I always pray that, Lord, now this time I want a man that loves you so much, that will really serve you so much. So involved in the, involved in the ministry that, that if I fall, he will be the one to carry me. So I saw that to him, even though he's not tall, dark, and handsome. He's so just, the, it, it was really God. He's just everything in person. Yeah, now, as we age, because we are already 34 years in our marriage, and as we age, I can see the love gets stronger. Even sometimes we have a lot of arguments, but the love gets stronger. You have to, to, to put spice on your relationship as you age. And yun po yung, uh, that's the one that I can see with my husband right now, that we are best friends. 
We are not, before we are best enemies and you will become best friends. And besties. <laughs> BFF. <laughs> Besties. Okay. So now he's, the, he's really the one that God gave. Saki naman, siya lang yung number two eh. This is not the number one. For me, the Lord is the number one. Amen. This is only my number two. Well, uh, what can I say? How do you know she's the one? Well, now I know. <laughs> uh, actually, uh, Uh, the Lord will lead you on that uh, stage. So always, as I said, don't rush or don't be in a hurry. And uh, enjoy your relationship as friends, know each other. And really, when the time comes, you will never regret, you know, looking back. And you will just say that uh, those past times and today, uh, you will just uh, smile or luck, you know. That's the best thing of it, that uh, really you you focus more unto the Lord then the Lord will just take care of the desires of your heart. Amen. Yeah. I hope for those people who are married uh, here, uh, you stop asking this question. How do you know they are the one? <laughs> 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 Awkward. <laughs> <laughs> no return, no married. exchange. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, um, next question. Uh, what do you do to keep a marriage healthy? How do you deal with arguments, disagreements, etc.? So something short and quick. So probably for us, like, uh, uh, we enjoy, actually, we enjoy, like, uh, talking to each other, even, like, when we wake up, like, in the t uh, 12 a.m., and we just talk, we just, we just talk about anything under the sun, and we just enjoy talking and talking and talking. And if it's like almost like 3 a.m., I would tell him, can you take me to school? I, will, I don't want to drive today. Then he would do that for me. So, uh, like you give them favors, you know. Then like some, t uh, you know, we, I, when I ask him to drop me off to school, in the afternoon, I would promise him we will have a date after that. <laughs> so that's how he would drop me off and uh, pick me up to school. What do you do to keep a marriage healthy? First, we keep our relationship with Jesus. That's the best answer for me. Uh, how do you deal with arguments, disagreements? Um, uh, the truth is, since we are both selfish, uh, there will always be arguments, disagreements. But one thing that we learned from one another after 25 years of being together uh, we learn to say sorry. Uh, we learn how to. We learn how. To, uh, uh, we learn when to apologize. Sometimes, even if it's, uh, uh, I it's my it's uh, I was wrong. Uh, still, she will apologize. Sometimes she's wrong. Still, I will apologize. It doesn't matter who's wrong or the the goal is for us to go back together again in unity, because the devil will always use that opportunity. You know, to, to tempt you and uh, break your marriage apart. Because if you'll be successful breaking your marriage, you'll be successful breaking your kids, breaking your entire family, breaking the entire society. And then, uh, you know, there will be chaos. So, yeah, what do, you keep, what do you do to keep your marriage healthy? First, we put Jesus first in our relationship. It's like the three chords. They say that if you bind two chords, it's a stronger chord, but if you put the third chord, which is Jesus, 
then it be, it will become more strong. strong it, it becomes stronger you know, compared to the, to the two chords. So put Jesus always in your relationship. So in addition to that, like if you have God at your center, like if you have problems, you can tell your problems to God. And he can tell his problems to God too. And God will take care of it. Do not tell it to your in-laws. <laughs> Or else you'll, you, you'll be in trouble. <laughs> I've experienced that. <laughs> when I'm still young in my marriage, um, maybe first year or second year, you know, nagsumbong ako sa biyanan ko para mali pala. Well, uh, for me, it's just like a plant, you know, taking care of a plant. You have to water the plant in order to grow. Uh, you have to put it under the sun or sa merong, uh, ano ito, uh, init ng araw. Or you have to cultivate it, put some uh, fertilizer so that the, uh, you, the plant will grow and one day it will bloom and uh, it will bear fruit. The same thing with the relationship, you know. You have to nurture it and cultivate it. Uh, you help one another in a, in a literal sense in doing it, you know. Uh, sometimes uh, early in the morning she will cook, she will uh, wake up and cook for the food. Me, I have to, uh, ano ito, uh, yung igaan ko, o yung ano, ako na yung mag, uh, magtutupi. I'll be the one to take care of all the beddings. And then, uh, I'll do the the mopping of the floor, vacuuming the, the entire house, you know. Because my house right now is in Beverly Hills. <laughs> and you have to, once she's done and everything, uh, all the pots and... Uh, uh, trust, I'll, I'll take the trust, I'll clean uh, the dishes, wash the dishes. That's one way of uh, nurturing your marriage. Not only in uh, loving her, uh, trying to tap her at the back or kissing her or what. Uh, the good thing there is that you are helping one another. Uh, the things that uh, uh, you, once you saw her having difficulties in doing it, help her. No? Kasi mayroong mga lalaki dyan na, oh, hindi ko trabaho yan, na, trabaho ng asawa ko yan. Oh, that's not my job. That's her job. I'll not do it. No. Remember, what, the, what we heard this morning, pastor says, the two shall become what? One. They are no longer two, they become one. So you help one another. That's why Adam, as a, uh, ano yun? Meron siyang kasama. Adam, uh, Eve was given to Adam not, not to enslave uh, Eve, no? But she will be her companion or helpmate or soulmate or whatever you call it as long they they help one another. Okay? So you did not, ma- I did not marry my wife to get a, a somebody who will <laughs> a, uh, not a, a cleaning lady or what. But we help one another, you know. And then uh, what is the second one? Argument. How do you handle argument, Bill? Remember, once you are in argument, both of you are hot-headed, don't talk, don't argue. Let the other one settle down or cool down, cool up first, or you better part ways first. Because if you will argue, you are both hot-headed, nothing will happen. It will just uh, mess up, you know? So don't talk first, calm down. Once you are ready, calm down. Then, if you are ready to talk, then talk the whatever the things that you are not agreeing or the problems all about. Then I believe uh, you can. There's no problem that cannot be solved. And as Pastor says, always acknowledge the Lord. He must be always at the center of your relationship. So it is good if you are going on that in the future. You are planning to. Marry somebody, and on this stage you are courting already, or you wanted to have this kind of uh, in your life. Uh, you better seek God first, and I believe along the way, as I have said, always on the process, the Lord will lead you there. You know, and you will never regret. Pastor, when there's a beautiful guidelines given by God in the Bible uh, for Adam and Eve to have a healthy marriage. That is when God tasked Adam to rule 
over the animals, give them names. So he's the ruler, he's Tarzan, king of the jungle. But he never asked Adam to rule over Eve. He asked Adam to lead Eve, not rule over her life or enslave Eve. Hey, Eve, get me beer. I'm going to watch NBA. That's not the design of God. In the, uh, in the, in the first place, he asked Adam, rule over animals except Eve. You will lead Eve, but not rule over her. Not Oh, I don't want your haircut. Next week, I want it to cut short. You don't, you, you don't own your wife. You lead your wife. Your wife is not your slave. So let's be clear about that. That's how you maintain a marriage, uh, a, a, a healthy marriage. So you are equally, uh, you are equal in the sight of God, man and woman. So it's just that the man is like uh, assigned to be the leader, but you are both significant to God's eyes. It's just that the man is being asked in front of a horse when, you know, or, or driving a motorcycle is the one driving, but still the direction, you will decide on it together. So there is no like, I am better than you, I am higher than you, or whatever. There is a leader, but not necessarily you are more significant. You are both significant, whether you're a man or a woman. So, enable for you to keep your marriage healthy. You wash dishes together. You do the laundry together. <laughs> you eat together. I do the laundry. I do our laundry. Imagine that. Uh, so, whatever she does, I do it. So, there's no, there's no like, uh, uh, I'm in this position. I'm earning much more than you. So, you do that. And I do. No, no, no. It's equal. Yeah, it must be equal so that you keep a healthy marriage. Thank you. Um, uh, we're going to skip that one. And we're going to go on to uh, like singleness question. So what if I'm single for the rest of my life, or what if I'm lonely without a partner? What, uh, I, I guess that's the biggest question is that a lot of us are single in here, so, or maybe not, um, but a lot of us are single, and so there is something called a blessed singleness. So can you, can you guys speak on, on what that means? I mentioned a while ago in my preaching that your wife or husband is a gift from God. Another thing is blessed singleness. There's also this, uh, there is this thing called in the Bible, a gift of celibacy. Now, coming from the word itself, if it is a gift, that is something enjoyable. If you don't enjoy it, that is not a gift. Then you are not called for celibacy because you don't enjoy it. Because it must be something that coming from you and coming from heart and uh, from God and you agree together that you are entering in, into a gift of celibacy because you are being assigned to a specific purpose in life, just like what happened to Apostle Paul. But if you, uh, of course, if you long for somebody and you, uh, uh, you, 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 you want to have a family someday, uh, this word will always look at it as in a perspective of, Oh, that person is lonely because, oh, how sad. He or she doesn't have a partner. But here's the thing. That's the concept. That's the perspective of this world. That enable for you, the pressure, the social pressure, enable for you to be happy is that you see all your high school classmates, batchmates, college bas batchmates, after 10, 20 years, they are all now married with kids, and you don't have one yet. But here's the thing. That is just a social pressure. Because it doesn't mean being married is also being blessed. There are a lot of people into marriage, but not necessarily living their best life. Probably they are, they are into an abusive relationship. You know, so it is more blessed to remain single than to be in a very chaotic marriage, right? So probably God is protecting you yet and preparing you for a beautiful relationship in the future. You just need to wait. Okay, so, uh, so don't be pressured that, oh, my batchmates are this and that, they have kids or whatever. The thing is, the Lord has a different plan for their, for, their, for their lives. And also the Lord has a different plan for you. 
So wait for your turn. The Lord is the, the Lord is not deaf. He always hear our prayers. And uh, if you really desire to have a partner someday, then the Lord will always uh, grant that request. Just wait and make yourself right with God. That's good, yeah. Uh, as Paul says, uh, it's good if you uh, cannot, uh, you don't want to remain single and you cannot uh, contain it, uh, you better get married, Paul says. But before you get married, you must know uh, what you are getting into. And as a believer, you have heard all the prophets already that don't commit to or be equally and uh, yoke with unbeliever. believer. You must uh, seek first God, you know, and, and I believe God will give you the best in your life. And at the same time, if you remain single, don't be bothered. As pastor says, if uh, marriage is a gift or you, the, your partner is a gift, the same thing with singleness, you know, it's also a gift from God. And so enjoy your life if you're, you are single. If you are single, uh, you can do without a, ano yun, wala kang... Don't have freedom. <laughs> <laughs> you have all the freedom if uh, you wanted to go on the left or right or go straight. Uh, no one will fool you, you know. Uh, not in marriage. You are two already. Remember that. You cannot do on your own. You better consider the other, de uh, your uh, partner's decision. You are not doing it by yourself. So there is uh, the beauty of it, you know, both sides. So if you remain single, that's good, you know. God has a purpose, a much a better plan for you. If you, you are married, well, there's also a better purpose because God designed for man not to be alone but to replenish the earth. He says, go and multiply, you know. And that's true because God is well pleased and that is blessed as well. So whatever your position or state, kahit na 75 ka na or si Sarah, 90, 90 something and she got married, you know. Still, uh, she gave birth. Uh, yeah, she gave birth at the age of ninety. One. Can you imagine that? You know, she waited for so long. Uh, but I believe uh, the Lord has a, a plan for you. I stored uh, much better in your life. So don't be in a hurry. Just keep on praying. The Lord will direct you on that path. Yeah. Just enjoy singleness because, like, it. Uh, it I mean, like, it's costly if you're yeah. two want to go to Disneyland, you're going to pay for two. <laughs> but if you're single, you're just going to pay for one. So there's a lot of things that, like, it's good to travel. Like when you're done, like you're, you graduate from college, you enjoy life, you go through a lot of things. Like, check out what you could do to explore. I mean, there's a lot of things to enjoy being single. And it's and if you think about it, if we say that our, a human's life expectancy is 100 and you, um, you spend singleness, like, it's your, to your 25, you still have the rest 70, like, years to, to be with somebody. But you only have 20 years to be by yourself. Or even if you get married at 50, at least you lived a life of 50, but you still had another 50 years with somebody else. And so the logic is that singleness isn't, like, a curse. It's, it's not, like... Like, man, I'm the only one who's not single. I'm the only one who's not dating. Like, all these thoughts. It's, it's not like that. I, th I, think, I think a big part is changing your perspective that singleness is a fun and exciting time to go out with your friends and uh, travel together, enjoy a lot of things together, and learn so much. There's so much more to learn um, out there. And um, you guys have only seen so little. And so there's, there's still so much to see and so much to learn. And... And like what Pastor Jeff had talked about earlier, it's important to, as much as it is cool or uh, nice to find the Mr. Right or Miss Right, it's important to be the Miss Right or Mr. Right. And a big part of that is really getting to know yourself, working on yourself, getting to know the Lord better, and uh, spending that time cultivating who you are. So that when you're in front of Mr. and Mr. Right, you're you know who you are. You have so much, you have so many stories to tell. And there's so many things that you guys can do even much more than you could even could like ever anticipate. So don't think that you're selling yourself short just because you're single. So 
So, yeah, go singleness. <laughs> um, yeah. So we're going to move into a, a quick any questions from the audience. Uh, we'll take two questions uh, just for time purposes. Is there any live question? Do you have a question? Oh. Question. Do we have food after this? <laughs> yes, we do have food after this. <laughs> is it okay that you have like is it okay to have a partner that has different beliefs than you? Is it okay is it okay to have a partner that has different beliefs than you? Yeah, is it okay to have religious belief? Religious belief, it could be religious, it could be uh, any kind of belief. Yeah, any kind of belief, yeah. Uh, uh, for me, um, yes, it's okay, probably, but the thing is, it will only last for a moment. Why? Because if you have different beliefs or in whatever areas, it is just like agreeing on a certain route, and you have two different directions, it will be hard for you to reach the same route with two different directions. So uh, I would suggest, I would recommend, I would encourage, just like what the Bible says, that as much as possible when considering a lifetime partner is that you have uh, the same belief in almost everything, especially uh, when you talk about spiritual beliefs. As much as possible, consider that. But uh, it doesn't mean that other relationships are not successful having different beliefs, I'm not saying that. There are actually successful relationships. But the thing is, the chances are so, so, so low. But if you have a, a higher chances of uh, uh, being successful, try somebody or uh, 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 consider somebody who has the same belief as you. Uh, any other question? Anybody from the back? Anybody from the back? Okay. Jeannie, you have a question? Oh, Brielle, do you have a question? Yeah, oh, she doesn't have a question. <laughs> Jeannie, do you have a question? Jeannie? It's kind of long. I just, um, it's sort of deep to me because in my experience from hearing couples or from watching TV and from personal experience, I've always thought about, you kept expecting something about someone. You kept mentally requiring like some kind of type about someone before ever meeting your now significant other. I just wanted to know, have one of you ever had that in mind before ever meeting your true man? Talking about partner or somebody that you like? Um, just someone that you like. Somebody some, that you like. Like okay. an ideal type and stuff. Uh, like expect expectation that, that that they don't have a relationship yet. So if that is the case, I think it's hard to put an expectation for someone whom you do not know and you don't have a commitment. And it's the same thing with husbands and wife. Like they're general expectations but sometimes you work out those expectations because the more you build expectations sometimes you build you're, you're actually building walls against each other because that your partner might not be able to reach that expectation and you will be frustrated and you will try to change him you cannot change a person we i've tried that you know but you know the only way for a person to change is to pray for that person that the lord will make him realize that that you're doing wrong and the Lord will, you know, make him change. But it's really hard to give expectations to someone. For, for lifetime partners like married couple or boyfriend and girlfriend, uh, I, I would recommend that, okay, you may consider some expectations, which is the very obvious expectations. Yeah. Like you expect that person to be loyal, faithful, loving, caring, compassionate. Those are all basic expectations because you have a relationship. You are in a commitment. But uh, regarding your question, if it is someone that I like, 
For example, I don't know her yet, or probably she's my friend. No, uh, we are part of one group. I like her. I like her so much. But since we don't have a label, we are not committed. We are not in a commit committed relationship. I cannot expect something from her because it's unfair. Expecting some something that she will do to me or give to me or give me favor or whatever, I think that would be unfair. You know. So, uh, what what will I? What will I do is I will enrich our relationship, make it a beautiful foundation, and ask God, Lord, if you're willing, can you give her to me? If you say yes, thank you, Lord. If you say no, oh, thank you, Lord. You have better, another better person for me. If, you say, if the Lord says, wait, okay, I will wait. Because anyway, I'm only first year college, so I can wait. <laughs> You know what I mean? So what I'm saying is, it's hard to put expectation from a person that you are not committed to. Captain Jenny, ano? Oh yeah, I see. Expectation, yeah. Sometimes it will just uh, frustrate you, no? Because sometimes if you put a standard to a person, and that person has a different uh, yeah, perspective in his life. So it is very hard once you put something in a person that he cannot make it, you know. Uh, you're, you're expecting that. Uh, truly, indeed, in relationship, there's no such perfect uh, relationship, I mean to say. Uh, but you can, you know. You can make only your relationship be perfect once again, no? Always. Once the Lord is the center of your relationship. So, before you commit or uh, go into this stage of your life, uh, don't put those expectations. Just uh, give it to the Lord, you know? As the Lord says, uh, if you are thinking about those things and you are so worried about your your partner in the future. In 1 Peter 5, 7 says, cast all your standards or expectation or cares or worries unto the Lord. And for the Lord care it for you, the Lord will be the one to guide you, you know, and to attain those things. On, on the right time, no? Uh, and really, marriage is, uh, is a process. Like in school, you are uh, in studying, it's a, it's a continuous learning. The same thing in marriage. Uh, you learn as you grow younger, or no, grow older. <laughs> for me, no, my expectation for my wife, that on the last, the very last breath of my life, you know, I wanted that she's still holding my hand. <laughs> Kahit na yung matanda na kayo, no? Even though you're whole, uh, wala ka ng postizo, ay wala ka ng ngipin. <laughs> uh, wala na yung pilik mata mo, you, you no longer have those, anong tawag doon? Eyebrow or eyelids or, or what? Eyelashes. <laughs> Eyelashes. You know, you don't have that uh, Coca-Cola body anymore or you still love your your wife or your husband, you know, that uh, truly that uh, if God meant that person for you, you will love her as you have when the, when Pastor Jeff, if ever Pastor Jeff, you will in, invite him in your, in your wedding when he says, do you love this person, that covenant, you know, and only that will, can separate you. I hope and pray that uh, at the last moment of your life, uh, your wife or your husband is the one besides you. Amen. Amen. That, that is one thing, uh, speaking, of, speaking of expectations, that is one thing I, I admire with my wife. Imagine my wife, her father is, uh, he, he was an aircraft engineer. He was mechanically inclined. He's the handyman type of guy. And he married the opposite so imagine if he expects his father out of me. So that would be frustrations for her, right? But 
Instead, he tried to look at me in a different perspective and look at my gifts and try to appreciate it. Because I'm not really a handyman guy. I'm more of an arts and letters guy. I'm more of a managerial guy. So totally different with a mechanical in, mechanically inclined person. So you need to appreciate the person regarding, yeah, regarding to, the, to the gifting of uh, God to that person. Sakain, na? Any more? Last question. No, no more. No more. We're going to close it. Um, if you have any more questions, you can definitely ask them afterwards. Um, so as we end, any last advice? Uh, any one, one sentence advice? Last advice. Uh, <laughs> first, uh, just don't rush. Wait uh, patiently and in God's timing. This is really last. <laughs> Seek ye first the kingdom of God. <laughs> Amen. And the Lord will, yeah, will be added unto you. Don't seek first your boyfriend or girlfriend. Seek first the Lord. Amen. I will go with that advice too. Matthew 6.33, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. And all these things, including your partner in life, will be added unto you. So, put God first, and then you'll uh, receive the blessing from God. I do agree with them. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. And always remember, whatever your past is, God knows what's best for you. You deserve the best. You are a child of God. Always remember that. So, uh, let's, let's give our panelists a clap. Um, to thank them for the time that, uh, that they spent answering your questions. Uh, and uh, I hope that you, you take something out of this and you talk about it amongst yourselves. You really think about it, you take it to heart, and uh, you, you talk about it with somebody you trust and you um, live it out. And so uh, we will have a little snack afterwards. Uh, and um, if we, we thank you for all of you who are here, who are for attending. And if you have any more questions, if you want to know more about their love stories, feel free to ask them. Uh, and um, if I can ask Pastor Jeff to close us out in prayer. Thank you. Let us pray. Let's close our eyes and bow our heads. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for all your wisdom. Thank you so much for this kind of symposium panel, Lord God, where we can um, outpour, Lord God, your love to these young people. And I speak that uh, you reveal yourself to them, Lord God, and uh, just uh, uh, be the captain of their hearts, Lord God. We love you. We dedicate this uh, event to you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you guys. Thank all you right. for coming. So you can go to, to the office area and, uh, oh, actually, let's, uh, let's all, everybody come up onto the stage. We'll take a quick picture. Uh, together with our awesome panelists. Thank you. Come up to the stage. <laughs>